Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 9, season 3 of the F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory career mode, episode 51. And today we're here for the Austrian Grand Prix. But yeah, obviously if you do guys if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you do like and subscribe. We're trying to hit 10k subs at the moment and we are really, really close. So any help towards that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But yeah, today we're then here then at Austria. Obviously quite a good track for myself. In some cases, it was, it was the track last season where I got my first ever pole position in Formula 1, which is obviously really, really good to see. And then you know, the race didn't quite go so well overall there as well. But yeah, let's move on then in to free practice for the Austrian Grand Prix. And as you'd come to expect from the Williams RTG so far, it's, it was a fairly simple showing overall. We scored all the points that we needed to, you know, we're slowly but surely building up. I obviously ran a poll on the community tab of this channel as well. Over the last few days, you guys have voted in favour of future-proofing Williams as well. So what I'm most likely going to do is finish off all the aero upgrades, pick up the achievement for that, and then, you know, save up all the points, focus on what rule changes come in for Season 4. Obviously, probably Williams are going to be an absolute force to be reckoned with for Season 4, obviously, if we can get all the, all the parts sorted on the car, which is obviously really, really exciting to see. You know, have a team that, you know, I'm not with or I'm not intending to go to that's really, really OP. And obviously later on down this season as well, we will make sure obviously we do the vote for what you guys want to see for season four. But you're getting an extra upgrade on the car as well, ready for this Grand Prix weekend. You can see now we've only got that one final upgrade to do. 1,505 points for that. And obviously hopefully we can try and get that on the car nice and quickly here. As well, so exciting times happening in the Williams RTG. Obviously, it won't be a Williams road to glory for too much longer, as well here. But yeah, in qualifying, then moving on, then into Q1. Obviously, a fairly simple showing, no big surprises there. We came through in P3, a couple of tenths off my teammate Lance Stroll there, and Sebastian Vettel actually doing a very, very good job there up on the pole with Nico Hulkenberg right behind us as well. Q2 as well, you know, once again, a very sort of simple showing, nothing too much to really talk about. As well there, Sebastian Vettel once again, quickest of 1 minute 2 there, that was a phenomenal lap by him ahead of myself and Lance Stroll once again. So yeah, really not too much to say from the opening two qualifying sessions. No, at this point of this series, we should really just be expecting to make it all the way through in 2Q3 there. But obviously last season, as I said, I was able to pick up my very first pole position of the Williams Road to Glory here in Spielberg. And let's hope today that we can try and make it the second time in a row. It had been a changing conditions qualifying session so far here so the track was a little bit greasy going on to my final run here but we started the lap with just a few seconds to go on the board here through turn one very very leery there but you can just see the track is still a little bit moist you know it's definitely dry conditions but there still isn't a hundred percent confidence in the car six tenths up on fernando alonso so far by the end though of sector one so clearly it hadn't gone as badly as i had originally thought he trying to use the overtake and the hot lap erc you know really trying to mix it up to use absolutely everything, especially with such a short lap around this Austrian Grand Prix circuit. You do have quite a bit of ERS to sort of spare for your disposal, you know, when you want to drop it back down to four down the long straights, obviously, to get yourself that little bit of higher top speed there. Coming through the end of, of sector two, and the gap to Alonso has really dropped down to now just three tenths of a second here, so it's going to be very, very tight as we come in towards the final couple of corners. Can Alonso get his first pole position since probably 2012? If I'm not mistaken, they're through the final corner, down towards the line. Where are we going to be? It's going to be back-to-back -back poles here in the Austrian Grand Prix there. That is absolutely what I wanted there. Funnily enough, that was 8 tenths slower than last season's pole position. But obviously, with the changing track, that one still just goes to show how much this Williams has still improved. Their pole position over Fernando Alonso by 1.5 tenths of a second there with the Bottas, Hamilton, Lance Stroll, Esteban Ocon, Van Dorn, Kemi Raikkonen, and uh, Sebastian Vettel. Neither of the Ferraris had a particularly good qualifying session there with Marcus Ericsson rounding out the top 10 there. But yeah, that was a very, very tight qualifying session right at the very death there, but got the lap in right at the end of the session there. I'm really, really happy with that one there. So I think we're ready. We're prepared. Hopefully we can try and rewrite the wrongs of last season. Obviously we got screwed right at the very end of the, of the race as well there. But let's move on then into the Austrian Grand Prix. Good afternoon and welcome to Spielberg and to a circuit that in one form or another has held every Austrian Grand Prix in the championship except the very first back in 1964. 
It was at this race that John Watson lost a bet and his beard when he took Team Penske's only F1 victory in 1976. If anything, the stakes are even higher today with 25 points available for victory and a crucial advantage in the championship fight. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 meters above sea level with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of 2.6 miles with the best overtaking chances into turn one or the tight uphill turn three. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk about the Professor. That was a solid result in their last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. The Professor lines up on pole position, and it's Fernando Alonso in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Hamilton, Lance Stroll, and Ocon, Van Dorn, Raikkonen, Vettel, and Marcus Ericsson, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Sergio Perez, and Verstappen, Leclerc, Grosjean, Carlos Sainz, and Kevin Magnussen, Gasly, and Brendan Hartley rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, let's be patient going into turn one. We want to be in a good position for the rest of the race. Good luck. So here we are then, guys, ready for the Austrian Grand Prix. And we're going to go for a fairly sort of textbook two-stop strategy here. Ultras, ultras, super softs in this race. But I'm ready. I'm prepared. Hopefully we can redo the wrongs of last season. We're here on the grid. It is five lights for the Austrian Grand Prix. And it's lights out. And away we don't go. No idea what that is all about. The car simply refused to pick gear. I was spamming it up and down. And we finally do find a gear there. That has caused absolute carnage. Those Seb... Bottas and I think one of the Renault cars have all been massively screwed by that one there but no idea what that was all about we just as I said we just couldn't find a gear you can hear me trying to spam cycle through the gears there and yeah no idea what that was all about Seb dives it down the inside almost right into the back of Brendan Hartley there a very very aggressive move by Seb there not like we haven't seen that towards the end of the real life 2018 season there but yeah no idea what that was all about off the start but that has put me right down at the rear of the field here for the Austrian Grand Prix. There's Seb once again trying to make even more moves. And we just want to try and settle back down, get into a rhythm there. And as you can see, for some reason, the game doesn't reckon that we've engaged the clutch whatsoever. I have no idea what that is all about there. But yeah, we've still got the start procedure trying to light up here. So I don't know if that's going to cause us any more issues throughout the rest of this race. But yeah, that is not what we needed in this race there. We did get past Sofa Van Dorn as well. As I was just talking on about that. But yeah, no idea what that was. I don't think I've ever seen that glitch before in F1 2018. Whether that is even a glitch or what. You know, maybe there's been a patch or something. That means now you have to engage the clutch. It has been a bit strange. I never have actually been had to. I've only ever had to put the car in gear there. But now we're all over the back now of Brendan Hart. You think about going for a move up the inside. Through T1 there. Almost running to the back of him. Do run into the back of him there. But luckily, no front wing loss from that one there. But nothing really the Toro Ross is going to be able to do. To defend from myself either there and now we move up into p16 of this race there brendan though does try to keep it up the inside there credit to him you know he's in by far and away the slowest car not too sure what he's attempting to do by defending from myself there but yeah as i said last season we got completely robbed i do not want to repeat of that this season i'm willing to put everything on the line to win this race there fly past sebastian belt just goes to show how much this car has improved over these last two seasons there, but fly off the circuit at the end at the top of the hill there, but we do hold on to the position as well. There. Or maybe not, Seb is trying to come back at me here with the DRS. Is he going to be able to have a look around the outside down the hill here in towards turn three? I don't believe in the fake turn two there. Yes, we do. We do defend from Seb there. And now up into P14. One lap later, all over the back now of Pierre Gasly here in the other Toro Rosso. Are we going to be able to have a look to the outside here? In towards the on the Gasly much later on the brakes. We're just going to try and go for the switchback move. We do make it work straight past Pierre Gasly here. We're going to have the DRS on Roman Grosjean as well in the Haskar. Are we going to be able to fly past him? Yes, we are. Absolutely nothing the Haskar could do against me there. Obviously, remember, he is on a much harder compound of tyres there as well. Now, so now up into P12 of this race. And it's one good thing about Austria. It is certainly not a difficult track to overtake 
on as well. Though. The team really want me to dive into the pit lane there already by just lap 10 of this race. But we're still, you know, in a good rhythm, in good pace here. And now we're all over the back of Charles Leclerc and Verstappen here. Leclerc is going to be able to get past Verstappen. We're going to go past him as well. Almost zontered in there up the hill. We tried to get the nose up the inside of Charles Leclerc as well. Maybe try and get the power on the traction zone on the exit of the corner there. We duck back into the slipstream. We've got the DRS and hopefully, yes, we do fly back past the Sauber car there. Now up into P10 of this race here. So it's been a fairly decent few laps here. Back up to P10 by lap 10. So we're slowly but surely moving our way back up through the order here. Unfortunately for me, most of the group is still fairly bunched up in the early stages of this race. At lap 12 there, and now we've been slowly but surely closer to the back of Sergio Perez here. And look at just how early Perez broke in towards turn two there. That was probably from about, what, 60 metres back and we were able to do a Ricardo S dive bomb on Sergio there. Now up into P8 of this race as the first two drivers are now starting to make their first pit stops of the day here. And that is what we're going to do on the end though of lap 12. We're going to dive it in for my first of two pit stops here in the Austrian Grand Prix. Usually I try to go for the one stop, but you guys really want me to try and go for, you know, sort of the more basic strategy in these races. Try to make it a little bit more interesting for you guys as well. And obviously that is what I have agreed to do. Overall though, a fairly decent pit stop. You know, we do get the car back into gear at least this time. And that means now the start procedure has disappeared as well. But yeah, back up now in P14 of this race here. And now we really do need to try and fight back here on this fresh set of the ultra soft tires here but it was about this point of the race i realized that maybe this two stop strategy wasn't quite the way to go as you can see one lap later all over the back now of lewis hamilton but he is on a set of the soft tires here so clearly mercedes think they can take that car right the way through to the very end here he's going to go past pierre gasly as well we're going to try and get up the inside of the toros so a little bit of contact made between the pairs there but yeah lewis hamilton on the soft compound tyre here, so clearly he thinks that he can go right the way through to the very end. We're going to fly past him, though, down in towards turn one. And a lot of the AI have actually gone onto a set of the softs here. But one person that I know hasn't is my teammate Lance Stroll here. So clearly Williams have not quite got the strategy right. I don't know if they just felt that we couldn't be able to get, we wouldn't be able to get the tyres all the way through to the end of this race there. But yeah, uh, Williams, now we are on the alternate strategy here, and now we've got a real fight back on our hands to prove ourselves as the dominant leader in Formula 1 at the moment. Up the inside though of Roman Grosjean, a couple of laps later there, and now we're up into P6 once more of this race. A few more drivers now in the pit lane as well here. Verstappen, Ocon, and uh, that was it there for both of them, yeah, on the set of the soft tyres. So everyone seems to be able to make it a bit further in this race than we were able to on that set of the ultra softs here. So really, really unsure how that makes us feel in the second half of the race but there's nothing I can really do now all I've got to do is just continue pushing like absolute crazy here try to make this strategy work as best as possible though we do get past Charles Leclerc as well in the background nothing he could do again from my move there but one lap later on to the back of my teammate Lance Stroll here and unfortunately usually I try to play the team game but honestly at this stage of the day I just wanted to get up into the lead of this race and focus on trying to make sure that we didn't lose all too much from this extra pit stop here. We're at the halfway stage of this race. We've already built up quite a big gap over Lewis Hamilton as well just behind me here. We do get up the inside of my teammate Lance Stroll. We're going to be side by side at the top of the hill and yes we do now move up back up into the lead of the Grand Prix. So that has been a first to almost last and back to first inside 18 laps of this Grand Prix. But obviously that really does not matter just yet because we've still got one extra pit stop to make here. We are going to dive it in though on the end of lap 21 and we just want to get out on that set of the super soft tyres and just focus on the rhythm all the way through to the very end of this Grand Prix. The Hamilton and Stroll are both going to fly back past me there. Stroll at least I know is going to have to make another pit stop here but we could be out very very close to the Force India of Esteban Ocon here as we come through on exiting the pit lane here because he's out of the final corner and we should yeah we are going to be comfortably out ahead of the false india man so we're going to take it very very cautiously through turn one didn't want to take any risks through there usually it's a very very easy place to lose a bit of your front wing there but yeah we're back up now into an effective p2 of this Grand Prix, and we really really do need to focus on trying to close up to the rear of lewis hamilton once more there and run it just wide at the top of the hill there once again. Not exactly ideal. We need to do we do desperately need to get into a rhythm. And by a lap 29 of this race, we'd finally, finally close up to the rear 
of Lewis Hamilton here. Seven laps to go, which should be a fairly easy move past the Mercedes man, but I knew he really, really wanted this victory as well. You can see he goes a bit defensive down at the front straight. Here we are going to move to the outside. Are we going to be able to make it work? He does just about keep the nose up the inside there. It's sort of flickering between yellow and red there, so we're not going to be able to commit to the apex there. You can just see because of that on the exit of the corner, Hamilton not only picks himself up DRS, but the better run as well there, and he is able to defend at that position. Breaks so, so late as well at the top of the hill. I've got to give Lewis Hamilton a lot of respect there. He was just so, so late on the breaks here throughout the entirety of this race, but one lap later, we're going to go for the same move again there, but once again, just cannot commit to the apex then, not 100% sure if Lewis is able to keep the nose up the inside, and once again, he is just playing me absolutely perfectly here. We do get a good run there, but just at the last moment, notice my teammate Lance Stroll is trying to look past the Mercedes as well there, so Lance now has come back into this battle. Obviously, he won the French Grand Prix last time. Maybe he's going to be able to do it again here in Austria. Flies past Lewis Hamilton through these next couple of corners there. We're going to try and get back past the Mercedes man as well here. Down at the bottom of the hill. Are we going to be able to make it work that we try to swing it right around the outside? We do get the traction on the exit of the corner here. But Lewis is still keeping the nose right around the outside there. And we do now move back up into P2 of this race. But now we're trying to close up to my teammate Lance Stroll here and this is a much bigger battle you know this is one that we cannot afford to take risks over this is Williams potential first one two since what 2003 probably I have to say I don't think they've had one anywhere since then it might have even been you know before that you know they might not have even have one back then there but lap 33 though all over the back now of oh, Lance Stroll once more hopefully we can try and get this move working any time soon here with the slipstream with the overtake mode ERS absolutely everything here we're going to be side by side with Lance up to the top of the hill but once again just like Lewis Hamilton they're so brave on the brakes the AI just able to defend that move and honestly I didn't feel like I could break much later than what I was already doing there so Lance really did seem like he was going to be able to defend from myself here lap 34 now still in the slipstream still Lance goes defensive once more here side by side in towards town when we try to commit there but Lance just shows me the wheel there, and he will hold on to the race lead there. But that has worked out catastrophically for myself there. We drop now back behind Lewis Hamilton in this race there as well. So not exactly what I wanted. We tried to go for a very, very late lunge up the inside of Lewis there. And usually, you know, the AI a lot more aggressive on the brakes there. Not too sure why Lewis wasn't that time around. But hopefully, we should be able to try and get back past the Mercedes here. He goes defensive. We move to the outside once more here, but look at that, Lewis keeps the nose up the inside once more here, and all this is doing is help Lance Stroll further extend his race lead at this late stage of the day, just two and a half laps to go here, and Lewis is trying to play the defensive card, everything he can possibly do to try and defend from me, not too sure why he's going for this, I should be able to try and get back past him anytime soon here, and really what he should have banked on is the fact that myself and Lance try to fight each other to the outside, in towards the final couple of corners, no way we're going to be able to make that work, as we try to swing it around the outside there. Lewis does defend. Runs wide through the final corner though. Now we're up into P2 of this race once more here. But we have now got just two laps to try and close down. 2.3 seconds to my teammate Lance Stroll. And you know I like to think I'm the number one driver in this Williams team. But there is absolutely no chance I'm going to be able to do that against my teammate Lance Stroll. 1.1 seconds around a one minute lap track is all but impossible here. And as we move on to the final lap of this race. You can see we're all over the back though of Lance. But I think it's just going to be too little too late at this very, very late stage of the Grand Prix. Through the final couple of corners, are we going to be able to get absolutely anything on my teammate Lance Stroll that we cannot get the car turned in through the final corner? And Lance Stroll is going to make it two from two, but it is Williams' first one, two in for however long I can even remember at this late stage of the race there. But yeah, what a crazy race that was from first down to basically the rear of the field and then fighting for the win once more there. But Lance Stroll proves himself as the victor at the end of the Austrian Grand Prix. It's a well-deserved victory for Williams then after that breathtaking Grand Prix. So, uh, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, I think the track conditions just really suited their car today. Wind, track temperature, you name it. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature. So the more easily you can keep them there, the better your race tends to go. And that's exactly what happened. Their car just looks so comfortable out there. And I can see our drivers making their way out now. It's been a sublime team performance, and it's the culmination of a lot of hard work. Williams are your winners today.
So there we are then, guys. The end of the Austrian Grand Prix. What a crazy race that was overall. They're very, very interesting on the whole. Hopefully, as I said, you guys have enjoyed. But Lance Stroll takes the race victory. Just one and a half tenths clear of myself. There with Hamilton in P3. Both Force India's fourth and fifth. Which means Mercedes power units lock out the top five places at the end of that race. Only Valtteri Bottas was further down the order there. With uh, Kimi Raikkonen sixth. Verstappen and Ricardo seventh and eighth for Red Bull. Charles Leclerc ninth. Hulkenberg 10th with Grosjean, Fernando Alonso from the front row. They're all the way down to P12 by the end of the day. Ericsson, Brendan Hartley, Pierre Gasly, Seb Bottas, K-Mag, Stoffel van Dorn and Carlos Sainz, the only driver not to make it through to the end of that race as well. We had Lance Stroll, 50 points out of 50 in the last two rounds. Maybe he could just sort of show himself as a title threat in the latter stages of this season, but there is still a long way to go before we start thinking about that. But yeah, really does go to show how quick this Williams now is. If even Lance Stroll can now start winning races as well, which is obviously really, really exciting to see, you know, should definitely mean that, you know, the fight for the constructors should be made a little bit easier for ourselves. But we further extend our lead at the top over Sergio Perez now up to 44.64 ahead of uh, Sebastian Vettel there in P3. My teammate Stroll jumps Danny Rick and Max Verstappen there with Esteban Ocon jumping Hulkenberg, Leclerc, er er K-Mag, and I think Marcus Ericsson as well there. And in terms of the constructors, no real changes there either. We now have a 66-point lead over Ferrari after the opening round, opening nine rounds of the season. But there we are then, guys. That has been the Austrian Grand Prix. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Make sure you do like and subscribe if you're new around here as well. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time out for the British Grand Prix.